Hey, good morning. I hope you're having a good day. Welcome back to Morning Devotions. I feel like I start every single one of these with, hey, good morning. Maybe I'll find a new intro there. But um, yeah, we're in the book of Matthew. So let's go ahead and get a screen share going. Uh, Matthew chapter 2 is kind of where we're sitting. Uh, we went through Matthew chapter 1. If you missed any of that, feel free to go back and uh, see what you missed because there was some really good information in that. So here we go, Matthew chapter two. We're gonna break it down into two sections today. Uh, the first one is sections one through two, dealing with the visit of the Magi. Remember, Jesus is being born here. And also remember that the picture that we're looking at of Christ, uh, go back to this screen, the picture in the Gospels of Christ is the picture of a king. So keep that in mind Matthew talks about the picture of Christ as a king. So you'll see this kind of as a, um, as we move forward. All right, so here we go. The visit of the Magi. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Herod the king, behold, there were wise men from the east uh, to Jerusalem, the Magi, who saying, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east. So this king has his own star. Uh, in the east and have come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And whenever he had gathered all his chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, and now Bethlehem in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah? In other words, Bethlehem is the low bar for all of the places. It has the least amount of class. It is the other side of the tracks. Um, they don't have the respect of the people or any other group in Israel. For out of thee shall come a governor, and thou shalt rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring the word again, that I might come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And whenever they came to the house, now I want you to notice this is house, not the stable. This is probably, Jesus is probably about two years old at this point. They saw where the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshiped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they pretended presented to him gifts, gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. So let's kind of break down what we just read. In keeping his preteros, Jesus as king, Matthew included the visit of the Magi from the east. It would make sense that with him wanting to present Jesus as a king, this would be the group of people that he highlights. Um, the visit occurred during the reign of Herod. Theologians believe that the Magi were students of science, especially in the areas of astrology and religion. And concerning the star, it was not a natural phenomenon, but a supernatural one. Because if these men were astronomers, they would have been familiar with such a phenomenon had it been able to be explained naturally. It would require more than a natural manifestation to explain their journey, because it's a journey of faith. This is something they had never seen before. This is something that um, had never happened before, whether it was a star or a group of stars or some sort of solar um, event going on. There's been much debate, but the, tr the, the thing is, is these wise men, these magi from the east, took a step of faith and followed um, a star into the unknown because they believed it led to a king. Um, in his frantic fear, Herod summoned the chief priest to inquire because here's these magi standing before Herod where the Messiah is born. They found the answer in the prophet Micah's writing when he said, but thou Bethlehem, Euphrates, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, were belittling Bethlehem again, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me, that is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth have been from old, from everlasting. So 
here we have them bring this information to Herod and say he's coming out of Bethlehem. Um, the very, and Herod had a secret meeting, desired to know exactly when the star appeared, under the falsehood of desiring to worship him as well. He told him, whenever you find him, come tell me so I can go worship him too. So once they left Herod, the star reappeared. So they had actually, it appeared, they followed to where it was, but most historians believe that the star did not appear whenever they got to Herod, then they left, it reappeared, thus God confirming that the search would be rewarded. And when they came to the place where Jesus was, they offered two things. They offered in recognition of his person, they bowed down and offered worship. Secondly, they offered gifts fit for a king. And offering worship and gifts, they were warned that they should not report back to Herod. They once again trusted God and went home a different way. So Matthew writes of the one, Jesus, who will rule the world as king of kings and lord of lords. He'll be recognized as sovereign by nations of the earth, just as he was recognized by the, by the Magi. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And so this sets the stage for Jesus to be king. At his birth, he's recognized by kings. And so, but then something else happens. When they departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph. Remember, this is all kind of Joseph's rendition of the story. In a dream saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and flee to Egypt uh, and be thou there until I bring the word. For Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And when he had heard that of the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled, which spoken by the Lord, by the prophet saying, out of Egypt, I have called my son. Then Herod, whenever he saw that he was mocked of the wise men, was exceedingly wroth and brought, bring for, brought forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem and the coat and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under, according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. Then he was fulfilled, which was spoken by Jeremiah, the prophet, saying, In Ramah was there a voice heard lamenting and weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children, and would not be comforted, because they are not. But when Herod was dead, behold, an angel of the Lord appeareth in a dream to Joseph. So this is the third time that this angel has appeared to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Arise, not in um, this third time in the first two chapters that an angel has appeared to Joseph, this time is happening in Egypt, saying, arise and take the young child and his mother and go into the land of Israel, for they are dead which sought the young child's life. And he arose and he took the young child and his mother and came to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus did reign in Judah in the room of his father Herod, he was afraid to go thither, notwithstanding being warned of God in a dream, he turned aside in the parts of Galilee. And he came and dwelt in the city of Nazareth, which it might be fulfilled by, which was spoken by the prophets, he shall be called a Nazarene. So here, the inquirer of the Magi had thrown the city into a frenzy. Uh, Bethlehem is a small place. A report soon reached Herod as to Jesus's dwelling place. Um, so Herod finds out where he's at. The king immediately took action to remove his comp competitor for the kingship. Joseph is again approached by an angel. He, flee he obeys a fleece to Egypt. Matthew indicates this, this would happen in Old Testament prophecy. Hosea 11 and 1, I called my son out of Egypt. The failure of the Magi to return evoked the wrath of Herod. He gave an order to kill all the boys in Bethlehem two years and younger. Now people have attempted to figure out how many were slain, but historians say the number was probably small since Bethlehem was a small village. And on a third occasion, Joseph is visited by the angel who communicated God's message. As Joseph has been instructed to leave Bethlehem and seek refuge in Egypt, he's now instructed to leave Egypt to return to Israel. Jesus could live there safely because Herod the Great has died. Joseph, however, is hesitant, settles in Judea due to Archelaus, settles in parts of Galilee in the city of Nazareth. And once again, Matthew calls our attention to the fact that he returns to Nazareth is significant for he said, so 
was fulfilled through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. Now the Galileans were despised by the Judeans. Judah was home of orthodoxy, the great shrine, the temple, great teachers had come out of Judea, but Galilee was an area that was very looked down on. They couldn't understand how a Messiah would come out of such a place. Um, or one theologian put it this way, Galilee gave Jesus a home, Judea gave him his cross. And so that was the, the, the kingship being recognized by other kings of Jesus, his exile into Egypt, his return to Israel. And the, that kind of summarizes uh, Matthew chapter two, Jesus is king. Jesus is worthy to be worshiped. And or let me put it like this, wise men still seek him. We can see a star, we can see things, and if it even goes away, we still stay on the path to seek him. And whenever we seek him, we bring him our worship, and we bring him something worthy of his kingship. We bring him our lives, we bring him our hearts, we bring him our souls. And so seek him today. Let me pray for you. Jesus, just as the Magi sought you whenever you were born, just as they followed the heavens, let us seek you. Let us follow the signs that point to you. And whenever we find you, your word tells us that if we seek you, we will find you. Whenever we find you, we bring our sacrifice of worship. We bring our hearts. We bring our souls. We bring our families. We bring our lives. Because at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow. So we bow our knees to you and we confess that you are King of Kings and you are Lord of Lords. Thank you for everything you've done in our lives. In Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day. And tomorrow we will jump into chapter three. Bye-bye.